I've been successful by finding ways to get stuff done and make things happen. And that's about connecting people and connecting ideas. So the world of possibility and the world of the doable are important parts of what the digital and IT function have to bring to the party. In the face of some difficult situation, all that is ever missing is a conversation. Taking the job would put me on my learning edge. I think at the point anyone walks into something and says, I can make a difference and, and it's already tailor-made, you're set up for failure. If you want to have world-class suppliers, you need to be a world-class customer. This is CRNet TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today with Charlie Forte, who is the CIO of the UK Ministry of Defence. A very warm welcome, Charlie. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here today. Charlie has 36 years of experience. In his previous roles, he was the Deputy Group CIO at British Petroleum. He was the CEO uh, of Global IT Services at uh, Prudential. And he was Interim CIO at Thames Water. And now, since a year and a half, you're at our Ministry of Defence. Just to set the scene a little bit, the uh, UK Armed Forces uh, have about 147,000 uniformed personnel uh, in the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. Uh, and uh, they employ 57,000 civilians, a big organisation. The total budget is 60 to 70 uh, billion pounds uh, on a yearly basis. The IT spend is about 3.7 billion on a yearly basis, which is probably one of the largest IT budgets in Europe. You have a big responsibility here, uh, Charlie. <laughs> I, I have an absolutely uh, fantastic job. And mm -hmm. when I was given the opportunity to, uh, to come to UK Defence, it was one that I really, really uh, couldn't turn down. And I suppose in summary, what I'm being asked to do is to take advantage of all the revolutionary stuff that's happening in the world of digital technologies and information and find a way to put transformative digital capability into the hands of our front line, our military front line, as well as how we run the business. Mm -hmm. And to do that in a way that allows people to be able to make to use it in a very easy way, that's not something we've traditionally had lots of, yep. and to do that in a way that makes everything integrated uh, and, of course, secure. Uh, and that is an absolutely fantastic opportunity that creates both amazing upside opportunity mm -hmm. and one or two challenges along the way as well. So you're here now for a year and a half. You've been working on the reorganization of IT here at MOD. What have you been able to realize already? So I think one of the biggest uh, opportunities that we've been able to realise is something that before I took the job people said would be quite difficult, uh, but I think we've actually achieved, and that is the uh, beginning to act as a much more integrated group, if I, if I call it that. And of course, to be able to realise the value that can be had from digital and information technologies, um, the whole point is it needs to work across the whole enterprise. And you mean the different groups, it's Army, Navy, uh, Air Force? Yeah, so, yes, and all of the various, uh, there's a quite a complex set of organisational mm -hmm. um, components that make up defence. Mm -hmm. For example, there is a very large acquisition procurement organisation, uh, which is core and central to, to what we do in acquiring military capability. Yep. And digital, of course, is at the heart of that capability yep. uh, today. So I think the biggest uh, achievement in the first year is really getting the support from the top team, all the frontline military chiefs mm -hmm. and all the people that, that, that run the other parts of the business and saying we can't continue just to plough our own furrows yep. right now. We need to find a much more uh, connected way of working. So our functional strategy that we put in place at the beginning of this year has really three quite important underpinning principles that talk to that outcome. Okay. Uh, so the, the first one is cohesion, how we work together mm -hmm. uh, and how we use common standards and architectures in order to support that. Mm -hmm. The second one is integration. Everything that we do, big or small, point forward, needs to be built with the 
design aim of being much more integrable than has been in the past. Yep. And then the third one is a bit of a cheat because it's two together and it's moving at speed and it's adaptability. We have very big long run programs, multi-year programs. And of course, context changes, technology context changes, yep. our business context changes, the threat profile that we are responding to changes. So we need to find a way to be a bit lighter on our feet mm -hmm. in being able to adapt major programs. And those are the core underpinning principles that we're getting after in driving this more cohesive and connected way of working as one big entity. So cohesive, integrated, and making it more agile. Is that is that what is that? Well, yes, I mean, so so the speed and adaptability pieces, of course, <laughs> it has to be much more agile. We need to find a way to um, design, build, and deliver capability that can be adapted, modified, and updated on, and I really mean orders of magnitude, faster time cycles yep. than we have traditionally mm -hmm. been used to. And there are lots of barriers in the way of making that happen. Very few of them are technical. Um, they are mostly about our cultural response, including our cultural yep. procurement response to engaging the marketplace. Uh, so we've uh, lots of upside, but lots of challenges as well. So that are your three, let's say, operating principles. Um, so how do you then how do you do that? Because you can decide on the principles, but then how you implement these principles? What so so our. Our functional strategy has five swim lanes, if you like, of activity, uh, which really represent at, a, at the big handful level the things that we really need to get focused on. Um, and they're quite big and they're quite aspirational, but they're intentionally in that space at this point. So the first one is strong cyber defence. Uh, it goes without saying the threat profile in the world, true for everybody, it's certainly true for uh, uh, for something like UK defence is a very dynamic and changing risk profile. So we need to be on top of how we deliver a strong cyber defence world. Um, the second one we've called digitising the battle space. Mm -hmm. So lots of the battle space is already digitised, but we kind of need to move it on mm -hmm. to the next generation and, of course, build in some of those capabilities yep. uh, that, that, that we just talked about earlier. Uh, the third one is then using information to run our business in a much more simplified, standardised mm -hmm. uh, and cohesive way so that we make better decisions. Yep. Um, the fourth one, very close to home for the digital and IT function, which is making sure we are designing, building and delivering IT services that are relevant, effective and efficient. Yep. Um, and we've got some interesting benchmarks that we need to challenge ourselves with. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is an enabling uh, uh, strategic goal, which is about having a functional capability uh, that does what we need it to do in the modern world, chasing down and accessing the kinds of skills and capability that we need to bring to bear. And that's not just about the IT function itself. It is also about making sure that we are equipping our frontline military uh, people all the way through the organisation from the executive level all the way down to the operational military commander with the right digital uh, skills that they need. We call it being digitally savvy. On, so on all levels, at, at, at all levels through, through the organisation. So let's talk about the, these five um, swim lanes, as, as you call them, uh, a bit in, 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 in more detail. So in cyber defense, I mean, that must be a big, big uh, thing around here. What are, what are the changes that you're implementing? What, where are the big challenges there? Rather? So, so we, we have a six point plan in how we want to move forward in um, uh, building a stronger uh, cyber. cyber defense. Um, the, the, the first one is uh, one that you could argue is pretty old fashioned uh, and I've called it closing the back door. It's getting the IT basics right. Mm -hmm. So it's the things that all large scale organisations have to contend with. How do you manage uh, you know, the uh, obsolescence and the legacy uh, world that you have? Um, how do you put in place the right operating processes that allow you to, I mean, even do simple things like patch things at the scale and at the speed you need to patch things. So closing the back door is a really important uh, first part of our activity set. 
Um, the second one is managing obsolescence on its own. It is a really, really important swim lane for us. And that's not just in core IT. It is about how we manage obsolescence in our weapons platform systems, some of which are reasonably small weapons platform systems, and some of them are very big, like a ship. Yep. Um, and that has a particular set of challenges uh, for us. The third one is um, how we build the right internal culture that makes people digitally aware, uh, aware of what the right behaviours in terms of uh, cyber defence actually is, and that covers the whole organisation. Is, is that the most difficult part, would you say, uh, changing yeah, the mindset and the... Yes, I mean, it always is. Uh, and in many aspects of what we're trying to do, it is always the, usually the cultural aspects, yeah. you know, the way we've been brought up to think. Uh, and of course, we have great traditions here in, uh, you know, you know, in you know, hundreds of years of amazing traditions, which yep. we don't want to lose. We absolutely need to build on that. But of course, we also need to bring those traditions uh, and the, peop the way people have been brought up and think into the modern, the modern world. Yep. Um, and then just on, on the cyber defense, but just to finish off, our supply chain. You know, we have lots of risks and exposures by, uh, through our very complex supply chain. So we need to be making sure that we are running that down. And then my last one um, it has a, quite a long cycle time on it, and it's designing security in right at the beginning. And again, not just in our core IT systems, but in those big engineering uh, programs that we put in place that then deliver what you would see traditionally as big military capability, but of course it's, it's all software at its heart. Another challenge I can imagine is in, in, in the change of culture that you want to, um, that you want to implement is that Ministry of Defense and Defense in general has a, a culture of command and control, I can, I can imagine. So how can you make an organization more agile and, and, and implement changes quicker in that kind of culture? Um, it, it's a challenge, but here's a paradox. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, particularly the military world would be characterised as command and control, yes, and of often is. Yep. I, I, actually, there's to make all of that work, it's got quite a high degree of quite sophisticated teamwork that makes all of that work. And of course, good teamwork relies on people being able to talk to one another, give feedback, uh, and again, creating that virtuous mm -hmm. loop. So actually, the, a lot of the core culture that we have to deal with is working in our favour yep. uh, in that respect. So I wouldn't want to leave an impression that there is a complete command and control um, approach that is somehow a barrier to the successful things that we need to do in a modern digital world. Actually, mostly, we can work quite well with what is a very successful and very uh, long-established mm -hmm. um, military approach to teamwork. Yep. Okay, let's talk about the digital battlefield. I'm interested in that. How is that? How has digital and IT changed the battlefield, and and how do you see that progressing? Um, well, of course, uh, every kind of tool or capability um, that we have today is mostly a piece of metal wrapped around some software. I mean, from the very big examples like like aircraft or or ships, um, and you know, down to some quite small small things. So. Software and digital and data is an inherent part of the core tools that we give to people. Yeah. But those tools, for the, if they are going to work well, they need to be integrated. And data, as, as ever in the case, there's a multiplicative value effect when you join bits of data up and present it back in a one plus one equals three way. And that's our challenge. So our challenge is how do we make sure that we are joining things up in a way that add value back. And that's on both the, let's call it the, the smaller scale, the, uh, in an individual battlefield environment, mm -hmm. but also increasingly where we're integrating across multiple bits of forces, air, sea, land, the cyber world and space. Cyber and space are now two new domains okay. uh, of the battlefield. Um, and how do we integrate information across each of those at a quite a large scale? Um, so it's about the more effective use of information that might come uh, from the air uh, or, or might be on the ground. Um, it's also about making sure that our intelligence 
communities, which is not just in the MOD, but as a wider set of intelligence communities, is available and being used both in the longer term and in some cases the shorter operational term yep. to, to give people a better access to what's going on, what's changing in the world and what might even be happening in your local context. Mm -hmm. So integration of data is a really important part of what we need to do. And I would argue that's the same in any large corporate context. The, the underpinning principle is exactly the same. Yeah, but then in a, in, a, in a security environment, which is completely of a different dimension, of course. Yes, indeed. And, and of course, one of our challenges is to make sure that as we move forward in maintaining and building, enhancing our cyber defense capability, um, that can't be at the expense of the ability to integrate yeah. and collaborate and do things because the collaboration world that we're talking about here isn't just us it's our allies yeah. uh and you know it's the it's the teamwork that needs to exist uh, in a number of the the different areas that where we work with allies and partners that's a big challenge no? i mean the, the you need to integrate more use data more so i can imagine complexity increases therefore so, and at the same time, the, the cyber threat uh, in, in, uh, gets more mature and so on. So these two go hand sure. to hand, make it, make it every year more complex. Yes, uh, yeah. and, and it's about being uh, really focused and really clear, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when we're working with, um, with allies and partners, yeah. uh, about what it is that's most important in terms of improving interoperability mm -hmm. uh, and how do we communicate and work together in more powerful ways. Yeah. A third swim lane is, is about simplification, standardization, uh, being information-led. Can you talk a bit about the, 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 the way that you approach that? Um, I mean, again, I would argue this is a common opportunity and challenge that many large yep. corporate organizations have. O over time, we've built up complex processes and how we run the business. Um, some of them work in their own individual silos. Yep. Uh, and the opportunity is picking the sweet spot on simplifying that, standardizing that, uh, and allowing information to be uh, more integrated. Um, we, we have a number of different areas where information uh, exists in a, you know, a, a, a separate silo as part of even of a, an, an outsourced integrated piece of business process. But that information is something that um, we really need to be able to get access to and to integrate. So, yep. you know, I think there's multiple opportunities and multiple challenges. Our biggest issue there is less about um, what should we be going to go do that would add more value. And it's about being clear what our priorities are. Um, if I take um, logistics, so logistics is obviously a huge piece of business activity in the defence yep. world um, and works at a very large scale. So there's a great opportunity in that world to take um, a legacy environment and we're not going to change the legacy environment overnight, that would be impossible to do. Uh, but how do we draw the data and the information out from that integrated world, some, uh, from that legacy world, some of which is a little bit stovepiped, uh, and actually bring it to a higher level where we can begin to integrate it and yep. look at it in a more powerful way. So that's an important aspect of how we're trying to bring that to life in a way that is both uh, supports our strategic ambition, but also recognises the practicalities yep. of the legacy world that we and other people also have. Yeah, I can imagine that there's quite a legacy here. So, so what is your principal strategy to, to, to deal with this legacy? I mean, there's IT debt here, like in every big organization, but what is your, how do you, how do you deal with that? How do you make sure that, you, that it's not accum accumulating and getting bigger and bigger, that you keep this IT debt and, and legacy under control? So, so there's a couple of things. We're, we're, we're starting now to put some um, really experienced people, uh, you know, in place who can actually begin to put their arms around a particular subset of our uh, activity. And some of that is IT skills uh, people that I will put forward, but but it's also let's call it the functional teamwork, you know, that comes from other functional experts. So we're starting to coalesce around those 
and we've called it our transformation programs, um, uh, and that gives it a very clear organisational uh, and outcome-based focus mm -hmm. in, in order to do that. And then at the other extreme, um, there are some of the, the, the let's call it the more um, basic things that we need to go do, uh, such as physically putting legacy data in a consolidated um or at least fewer places than it currently might yeah. sit. Because if you've got a fragmented world, it's, you can integrate it, but it's harder. So, I mean, some of the things that we're doing, you know, would look familiar to many people in the IT world going back even yeah. 10 years or so. Uh, but those are important foundational elements that we need to make work in order to deliver yeah, the, the higher level piece. And then, final bit is how do we access the... You know, the, the, particularly the startup world or the unicorn world mm -hmm. uh, in order to find the right tools uh, that people can layer on top because yep. there's lots of clever stuff out there. So finding what that is and bringing that to bear uh, is a really important aspect of this. Is that a, a fundamental strategy to work a lot together with cutting edge startups and technologies and making sure that you have the right that, that you can incorporate that and even even make maybe make sure that only the MOD has it and <laughs> no other organization. Well, it's about o making sure only the MOD has it. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the world 50 years ago, for sure, you know, lots of innovation was driven solely out of the defense world. Yep. Uh, true in the US, uh, true here too. And of course, the innovation that happens today is happens in many, many other places. Uh, it's not predominantly driven uh, from the defence world. So no, we need to be accessing the same uh, tool sets that, that the rest of the world yeah. is accessing. Uh, and I think that's that's a really important uh, aspect of this. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the IT services and capabilities that, you, that, that you're building up and that you um, make sure that they're on the, on the right level. And, and, um, and let's talk a bit about the also the talent and the, 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 the way that, uh, how easy it is for the MOD to build teams and attract talent, because I, I imagine that goes together. So, it, it, I mean, it's a challenge for everybody, and it's particularly a challenge for us. We have great people. We have absolutely mm -hmm. amazing people, both in uniform uh, and uh, in uh, the civil service, uh, who are just amazingly passionate about what they do. So we need to find a way first and foremost to give them the ability to grow and develop their their skills. Mm -hmm. I, I've said a number of times to the teams that, I mean, I've been round the block a few times in my IT career, but I don't ever see or think can think of a time more than we have right now where there is such an opportunity. Uh, it's such an opportunity for professional growth mm -hmm. and I, I urge everyone in our teams to take advantage of that opportunity for personal growth and grab it with both hands. Um, in terms of attracting new talent, because of course we need to broaden the DNA, yep. we need to bring uh, new and other people and there are two things that I think are important. In attracting people to come in, if I go at the graduate level, this is a great place for graduates to come and develop at the early part of their career. Mm -hmm. I'm also saying to people, it's okay for you to come on board uh, and let's not pretend that I might make you stay here or suggest that you will stay here for the whole of your career. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to legitimise that. But what I can offer you uh, over a three, four year period here is an experience set that you won't get anywhere else. Yeah. And while I won't be able to necessarily pay you the same amount that you would get if you went out and you know were um, uh, being attracted by, uh, by the great and the good out there in the rest of the world, if you think about your career in its whole NPV sense, I would argue the skills that you will pick up here mm -hmm. in those three and four years will take you into a very different earning potential. And I'm, I'm trying to legitimise that and say that that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if I persuade you to stay because what you're doing is so exciting and attractive, which I think it is, then fantastic. That's absolutely great. And then m my last piece is even with the success of doing that, mm -hmm. um, this, the demand for high-end 
high level skills is just going off through the roof. I think we need a different relationship with industry than the one we have. And, and I would argue it is with um, smaller SMEs okay. that we can build a relationship with and we can access skills, specialist skills, in a way that allows us to pull a lever. But it's people that know us and people are familiar with us. It's not just a, a contractor that turns up. So can you explain in a nutshell how is how, how big is IT here? I mean, we know the budget, but and, and how is IT organized in the MOD? Um, so how are we? So so as part of the functional strategy, we put together a new operating model, um, and I suppose I I've summarised it as uh, it's my yin and yang model, uh, and that was by accident that we that we kind of stumbled on that as a way of explaining what we were trying to do, and what it means is. You know, in the inside, uh, you know, you're saying to people, um, you want to be able to do things fast. You want to have a, you know, you want to build business capability, military capability. Uh, you need to do it close. You need to be close to you as the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to know that when you build it, you will integrate it, and it will integrate with other stuff, including not just your stuff, but other people's yep. stuff. Um, so that's the close to the customer piece. The other side of it, the Yang. Uh, side of that operating model is, but in order to get that, there are some things you have to give up. So, you know, we have to work to common architectural technology standards. We need to design, build and operate a single IT road system. Um, so, so that notion seemed to land with people, you know, that we, that we get some things by being close to the customer, but we give up some things in order to make that happen. So the yin and yang model is, uh, I suppose, our underpinning uh, principle. Um, the, the operating model that we've then implemented has three core components. Mm -hmm. The close to the customer piece, which is the, the senior CIOs uh, that work with each of the main bits of business. Um, who are making sure that that particular part of defence is extracting the value it needs to extract from its investment, our investment in mm -hmm. digital and IT. And they're also the voice of the customer for the shared service components. Um, the central bit, the, the engine room, is a large-scale shared service, which does what it says on the tin. It delivers shared services across defence and also manages large strategic programs. So mm -hmm. there's some really big strategic programs. Yep. And then the third bit of the uh, operating model is the integrating glue that holds it together. And those are all new posts that I created. Okay. None of those posts existed before. So we have someone looking at end-to-end -end across cyber defense. Um, we have someone, it's a classic CTO role, but I've called it uh, digital enablement because I want it not just to be about the classic CTO stuff which we need to do and is really important but it is also about how do we uh, really in a value outcome sense start to leverage the technology game changers mm -hmm. um, and then we've got the, the, the integrating roles to run the function in such a big organisation so that we're doing common strategy, common business planning, yep. common portfolio management, all those things. So we're in the process of pulling all of that together. Um, two parts of that operating model report directly to me, the shared service piece and the integrating roles, and the CIOs that sit out in the business um, report to me, on, I suppose you would call it a dotted line. Yep. Um, but it's not a network, uh, although we do work <laughs> and uh, collegiately. I do hold them to account in year, which is new, that's new for defence. Okay. Uh, I'm holding them to account in year for specific objectives and outcomes. And we meet, I mean, no apologies for when we meet, it's a management team and we run it as a management team.